Well, Dr. Gerhard Watauer is a senior meteorologist whose uh, team has been mapping the movement of radiation from the Fukushima power plant. Joining us now live from Vienna. Uh, so let's talk about some of the atmospheric implications here. You've been charting how um, potential radiation is, is moving in the area. What's the immediate forecast uh, over Japan there, and, and where are you seeing the radiation spreading at this point? Yes, uh, hello. Uh, we're calculating this uh, since uh, the first explosion uh, happened uh, last Saturday. And uh, currently, the, uh, the wind is in a, in, a, in a good direction for Japan. So we, we see uh, radiation mainly getting uh, to the ocean and, to, uh, and not affecting uh, currently um, um, uh, Tokyo area and populated areas uh, directly. Well, now, would it be correct, as, uh, as, as your graphic was showing there, radiation uh, spreading eastwards uh, from Japan over the ocean, uh, is it going to disperse and become larger as it travels further? And where could it end up? Well, uh, I mean, uh, low levels of radioactivity, uh, uh, especially in a very uh, 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 bad accident scenario, uh, can, uh, over the next uh, days and weeks, can, of course, spread over wide areas of the world. Uh, but they would not pose a, a significant health risk uh, beyond uh, uh, the immediate areas on, on the reactor and some hundreds of kilometers uh, to some a few thousands of kilometers. So that means um, for most of the areas of the world, it would be low level, low level of radioactivity. All right. So, um, so as, as these, uh, these radioactive and contaminated clouds, uh, they move eastwards over the ocean. So you're saying they could spread and become uh, larger. As they get up into the atmosphere where the clouds are forming, uh, is it possible to have a radioactive contaminated uh, rain? And, and what does that mean for crops and the, and the uh, agricultural industry? Well, I mean, the, uh, the rain uh, would remove the radiation from the atmosphere and would directly put it on the ground. And, and they are, um, they are very long-lived radioclides, like the cesium, that would stay around there for um, 20, 30, 40 and more years and, and would affect the, the agriculture, as you see in Europe with the Chernobyl power plant, where we, we still have uh, in certain areas certain effects from the cesium. Yeah? But so so um, when, when you have these contaminants that, that are airborne, and as you were saying, are, are, are traveling over vast distances now, um, will they dissipate or will they continue to, to float around in the atmosphere around the world, thereby saying that this is not just a localized problem in Japan, no, but this has absolutely global, global implications here? No, it is, it is mainly a localized problem because, uh, as I said, uh, these railroad glides, um, uh, I mean, they, they can be easily washed out in the atmosphere. No? And in the pathway from Japan to the Pacific Ocean and across the Pacific Ocean, um, uh, supposedly there will be uh, precipitation and rain and, and most, most of the particles would be removed by the rain. Uh, and secondly, um, uh, many particles, uh, the, the, the half-life time of the railroad glides is partly only a few days. So but there are, scientists, there are scientists that say that um, certain levels of uh, radioactive contamination, they, they last for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. You're saying if, um, if it's just going to be washed out of the atmosphere by the clouds, then it's into the oceans. And, and then what? It's into the oceans, into, into the water sources. Yes, uh, but uh, compared, I mean, uh, one always has to assume that there's a lot of radioactivity now coming into the water uh, from the power plant itself. Yeah? So compared with that, um, I don't know how this compares. I mean... In reality, there, there may be some effects, yes, but, but uh, it depends very much on, on the level of radioactivity that comes really out into the atmosphere. All right, now let's talk about the people in, in, uh, in, in Japan. Um, how could they minimize exposure uh, to radiation, whether it's airborne or waterborne? What are the best things they can do? Well, I mean, for the airborne radioactivity, uh, the best thing is to stay at home, for sure. I mean, in these areas, uh, uh, in, in, in the vicinity of the power plant, like 50, 40, 30 kilometers, uh, even if there are no evacuation zone, I mean, people should, uh, should probably uh, follow advice and stay at home. Regarding the radioactivity uh, washed out, I mean, um, the only thing what you can do is, uh, I mean, to restrict the, uh, the agriculture there and to, um, uh, I mean, basically to decontaminate. Uh, I mean, if you walk outside and you have the radiation on your shoes, for example, uh, I mean, to, uh, to wash uh, the shoes and everything and to remove the radioactivity by that. All right, Dr. Gerhard Watara, a senior meteorologist live from Vienna. Thank you. Thank you.